So everybody, thank you so much for being here. Um, we're in front of the Cornelia Cafe, uh, a cultural iconic institution that now has closed. Uh, everybody is super upset about it. Uh, but I wanted to call this hearing because, uh, this rally because there is a public hearing at City Council today, um, nine bills supposedly to save small businesses. Um, and really the real solution is the Small Business Job Survival Act. Um, so really, I wanted to call it because I feel like it's a, it's a nine bill distraction. Uh, and the reality is this is a classic bait and switch, which is to pretend to give the public what they want in the flimsy disguise of strong legislation when it lacks real substance. Um, so whether it is a registry to track empty storefronts or to offer free legal representation when a business is in an eviction, these are policies that sound good but mean absolutely nothing when it comes to the crisis of small businesses. Um, ruining our neighborhoods and radically altering the face of our city and of course we're in front of the iconic Cornelia Cafe uh, and in my humble opinion someone really is to blame for this this is really City Council uh, and also Speaker Corey Johnson and many of you know that 1200 businesses close 8,000 jobs are lost every month so we're really in a, in a crisis um, so wouldn't you want city council to solve this problem immediately? Um, and they don't. And also the speaker doesn't. And if he did, he would push it out of committee and onto the full floor for a vote. And instead what he does is secret meetings that work against the legislation, refuse and disinvite the real activists that truly care about saving small businesses, and fight to manage any critical narrative that gets into the media. And that's super important. So I ran against Corey in 2017, and I looked up 168 of his uh, individual donors. And what I found is that out of half a million in campaign contributions, 70% were was primarily from real estate Wall Street, with a little bit of nightlife and corporate philanthropy thrown in. So you have um, you have basically his donors are the hyper gentrifiers, you know, of our city, um, and hence that's what you see. You see all the small businesses closing everywhere. Uh, so uh, in addition, mainstream media reports that he consistently uh, meets with lobbyists and votes to rezone neighborhoods uh, despite fierce community opposition. Um, also, Corey recently announced real estate contribute. He renounced real estate contributions about a month ago. But if he truly is against the real estate industry, what he really should do is pass the Small Business Job Survival Act, which all of you well know would give business owners like me an affordable lease. So I lost my business, Red Eye Coffee, in December. If I would have had the SBJSA, I would have been able to negotiate with my landlord fair rent, and I, my landlord you know, wouldn't have extorted $25,000 in cash that he said he could put anywhere. He could put in his car, he could put in his basement. So this is the thing is we, business owners need rights to have an affordable, uh, have an affordable lease. Um, so I also, I think we're entering in a different time when elected officials have to be responsive to the needs of their community. People are waking up, seeing through the veil of deception. So if city council is not responsible, not responsive to their constituents, the public and small business owners and getting rid of the mechanisms of displacement, they can and will be primaried from the left. And we already see this happening. They'll be voted out of office and it will be their own fault. And that's what I have to say. Thanks. <laughs> you know, I say it like it is. I've always done that. Okay. Sharon, would you like to talk? Oh, okay. <clears throat> Got written down. So. Hi, I'm Sharon Willems. As a longtime resident of the village since 2013, I've written about the small business crisis for the villager. I can attest to the fact that every politician who supported this bill dropped it like a hot potato when elected for a higher office. Gail Brewer did it, Mayor de Blasio did it, Tish James did it, Mark Viverito did it, and so did Corey Johnson. Though once a proud sponsor, his name is no longer on the bill. But there's still time for Johnson to gain the courage and conviction to do what's right for his constituents, for the store owners, and all of us 
who miss our laundromats, our favorite little restaurant, our cultural centers, our boutique owners that became our friends. You still have that chance, Corey, to save our small businesses, and we have the chance to make you mayor of New York City. If you do what you know, you need to do what you promised you would do when you called this situation a crisis. We know those bills at the hearing today will never save one small business. It's a sham pretense to stall the real solution into oblivion once again. But the crisis has reached critical mass. Because of you and me, because of us, the Speaker, Corey Johnson, had to do the hearing on the Small Business Rights Bill. We did that, and now we can and must make him call it for a vote. Rebney's money against us is not sufficient to drown our voice for what's right and what's essential to save our village. Like the sinking Titanic, rafts are filled with constituents sitting, waiting to be rescued by whom? By our elected officials. Be on notice because we can't help but notice that the only solution with enough sponsors to pass the city council sits bottled up once again as more and more Cornelia Street cafes close every day. Corey Johnson's at the helm. Corey, your time has come to steer the sinking ship. Well, I'm not uh, prepared at all like you guys, but I'm happy to be here today because uh, uh, my goal in the last 15 years is supporting the community, most of immigrant and working family community. Uh, I just want to bring to some ideas, but more the denounce, the denounce that the city is suffering because the crisis affects everybody in the, uh, in the whole city. City why? It's it's a crisis that affects the, the workers that work for a small business. It's a crisis that affects a small business and the dream of people that came here to the city to make their American dream go through. But it, today it's not happening. We're suffering because the city doesn't have the opportunity to continue to be the same New York to support New Yorkers and to support it, the the city most uh, the the, superior, the, the the city that has the most annex compound in the, in the, in the, in the United States. Uh, and we know why the crisis at Fed New York is not responsible only by landlords, but by the elected official. Because the elected official, I remember in 2013, the, the REDNI, the Real Estate Board of New York, invest seven four million dollars to support a campaigning for 45 uh, elected officials for 45 uh, city council 45 out of 51 were supported by landlords so it means that they have to co uh, to comply uh, they have to 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 uh, uh, advocate for the landlord not for the tenants not for a small business not for the working family so the same happened in 2017 so the, the elected official, including Corey Johnson, Mark Levine, and most of the uh, city council around the, the city of New York are taking money or took money from the landlord to 2017. It means that they have to continue supporting landlords and all the small business and tenants. So I think that this is a great opportunity today in order to save the small business in the city to create a citywide coalition, borough by borough, street by street, so every neighborhood should have a represent somebody to represent the neighborhood and that big coalition in the city and to force the city council including Cody Johnson to pass this bill and we have to take over the street in order to preserve the small business the small business belong uh, uh, represent the uh, belong to to immigrants in community because uh, 85%, most of 85% of the small business in belong to immigrants. 69% of the small business are the owners of Dominican. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. um, uh, and this is incredible. We don't see 
that Cory Johnson, and I compare him as a, uh, with uh, Donald Trump, that he doesn't do anything for immigrants. It means that this, and this time in New York, I think is that we have another Donald Trump on City Hall. Another Trump that is against the most business people that belong to immigrants. So we have to continue this fight. We have to continue, you know, this struggle. We have to continue uniting in order to create this big coalition in the city and to continue fighting to preserve small business and the jobs for the family, uh, the working family, and also for the uh, for the for, for the families and the youth. Because uh, map and pop small business, it means that we have to the, the opportunity to let the family, the children, the grandchildren to continue with this business. So business, small business in the city of New York is the backbone of the economy. Definitely, we have to continue this fight in order to preserve the, the great of New York City and not a city from the landlord of the money that they invest in the electoral official like Cody Johnson. Thank you. Uh, this uh, Cornelia Street Cafe was one of the gems of New York's cultural scene. Amen. Before they closed, the landlord was charging the owner of this place $40,000 a month for rent. Now that's just some kind of insanity going on there. <clears throat> what is this landlord going to do with it? By the way, <clears throat> The landlords here and in, on the next block was the Cafe Vivaldi, another icon of New York culture, a jazz center, keeping jazz alive in New York. They closed. Another wonderful landlord, his name is Croman, I think, I believe, an ex-con, you know? He's taking it over. What's he going to put in there? A McDonald's? A bookie joint? Who knows what he's going to put in there? What's going to go in here, you know? $40,000 a month. There are a lot of people I talk to up and down Bleecker Street. I've been communicating with store owners. We had a few of them out here from Papa John Pizza and from the laundromat across the street and from the little shop down the block. They came. They're busy running stores. They have a hard time coming out here. But they were glad to see me. They are really feeling it. They're not politically active people, but they're glad to know we're out here. Even though we're small in numbers, they know we're here, and they're glad we're here. The, the, the last part of this. We are dealing with a crisis right here in our neighborhood. But the crisis is in our neighborhood. There's a crisis in our country. There's a crisis in the world. Where do you start fighting this crisis? It's so big. You start in your neighborhood. And that's why we're out here. Thank you. I just want to say, we're watching you, Corey Johnson. You know, you, yeah. you want to get reelected. Listen to this, this, this message. This is, um, this is, this is a crisis. You, you know, this is going on. I've seen your, I've seen your uh, testifying when you had, when you were not feeling well, and you know, so. Get better and make a change. Thank you. Right. Robert, you want to say something? Yeah. yeah. The one thing I also wanted to say is <clears throat> I think what's sort of difficult for the public is that they hear about these bills, they hear about um, uh, these sorts of solutions that could uh, you know, help businesses, and I think they're uh, – uh, kind of the wool is pulled over their eyes because they think it sounds good. It sounds good to have a registry. It sounds good to, you know, this and that. And uh, but the real solution, like for me as a business owner, I lost my business red eye coffee in December. If I, if it was mandated by law that I would have had to have an affordable lease, where the landlord and uh, an affordable lease, and also that the landlord also tried to extort us for twenty five thousand dollars in cash. If it would have been mandated by law that that would that had to, had to happen that I would get something affordable and no extortion, I would have still been in business. So I think when the public hears some of these things, they think, oh, that sounds good, that sounds good. But if it's not really going to help uh, give business owners rights, it's really actually quite worthless. So and I think that's where for me personally, like that, 
outrage um, comes in. And Helen Rosenthal was at the uh, press conference at 930. And, you know, I asked the question, I said, hey, I was like, you know, you're talking about all this, these nine distracted distractions. Uh, you know, why don't you pass the SBJSA? And her's like, well, it's been, it's been, uh, you know, bottled up, or it's, it's been, you know, we haven't passed it for 37 years, so that means it has no, no substance. And what I wanted to say is, you guys aren't passing it because you get so many real estate contributions. That's really, it's the money out of politics issue that's really like the, mo the most important thing. Um, but I think that. Unless you sort of study this sort of stuff, the public doesn't really know how deep the deception really, really goes. And again, like I said before, I said they're all going to be primaried from the left. If they're not responsive to their constituents, their small businesses, their tenants, their community, they're going to be voted out. And they should be. And it's their own fault. Done. Robert. <laughs> I just want to say yeah. what good are those bills when her store is no longer in existence? Exactly. It, wouldn't, it, wouldn't help. It, wouldn't have, it would not have helped me stay in business. <laughs> so... Um, Good afternoon. Um, there's thousands of small businesses closing each month in New York City. It can't happen anymore. Corey Johnson is the speaker of the, of the city council. He has power to stop this immediately. Um, he could bring the bill to the floor. Why doesn't he do that? <laughs> well, we know for a long time he was a real estate puppet. Uh, he was in the hands of Rebney in the hands of uh, a whole bunch of other developers um, and lobbyists who are lobbyists for developers that he met. Um, it's documented in the New York Post. Uh, you can find it online if you want to go look. Yeah, also, um, I just have to say that in 2017, Fiona Rudin, part of the Rudin real estate dynasty, gave Corey Johnson $1,000. And also Eric Rudin, also of the Rudin dynasty, gave him $250. But, uh, you know, if you go to, I have a campaign website that actually um, they told me to take down, which I didn't. But uh, if you go to uh, www.coreyquinnforcitycouncil.com, uh, we did articles analyzing his real estate contributions. Um, and so you really get a picture there. Uh, you know, that he, you really get a picture of who he really works for. So uh, there's detailed analysis there. So <laughs> I just yeah. to put that in there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, so uh, Corey, wherever you are, <laughs> I, don't <laughs> s I don't see you, but. Um, <clears throat> Do the right thing and pass SBJSA intact. Um, <clears throat> I also want to say that this uh, small business crisis is not only a crisis of small businesses. This is a crisis uh, nationwide of gentrification. This is a crisis of displacement. This is a crisis of almost 100,000 homeless people in New York City. We can, I mean, we cannot let this stand. These are human rights violations. NYCHA apartments are crumbling. There's mold in NYCHA apartments. There's, there's repairs that have not been done for 20 years in NYCHA apartments. I've seen them. I've helped some of these people. But they're just Band-Aids. We got we to gotta help everybody. And in order to do that, it has to be done at the, at the system level. So what you're seeing now with the small business crisis and the gentrification and uh, ethnic cleansing that's happening in New York City is it's, 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 a, it's a crisis that <coughs> needs to be handled systemically. So I'm labeling uh, the small business crisis included, all of this combined, it's a systemic violence um, on, on people, may, uh, uh, many low income people, people of color, and just to point out that <coughs> ethnic cleansing is really happening in New York City, between 2000 and 2013, the white population increased by 455%, while the black population declined by 5% in Harlem. 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 Do you know what I'm saying? Harlem, the black mecca of the fucking country. I, I, I have no words for that. It's insane. And all the small businesses uh, run by people of color that are being pushed out by gentrification. You know, replacing black and brown bodies 
with white and rich bodies. That's the end game of the Department of City Planning. They're racist to the core, and we cannot let this stand. So, Corey, I don't see you still. Where are you? But let's pass this at least. And this, this uh, let me just say that SVJSA is the minimum you can do. It's not even touching, you know, it's not even touching the surface of the problem, but it's the minimum you can do so people can try to get their businesses back, you know, intact. And, and you know, there's lots of people who want to be entrepreneurs, but how can you be an entrepreneur when you, you're paying $40,000 in rent? You, you just can't. It's, 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 it's unconscionable. So let's do it. Thank you. Uh, did we just, did, does anybody else? Oh, Bennett. Nice Are you going to continue? Yeah, I got to say one more. Just one more thing. Yeah. <coughs> Hi. <laughs> I am Marty. How you? I know Okay, we're uh, we're not a big number of people out here, <clears throat> but many great movements started with few people. A woman's on the bus somewhere in Georgia. Uh, got up and said, I'm not going to sit in the back of the bus. And she moved up to the front of the bus. That began the civil rights movement. <clears throat> I can name a whole bunch of things in history that started very small and became very big. <clears throat> what we're doing out here, in the, we're doing it in Greenwich Village. We're not doing it in Hoboken. <clears throat> We're not doing it in Cleveland. <clears throat> We're doing it in Greenwich Village. Greenwich Village is not an ordinary place. Greenwich Village has influenced the world, the city, the country. It is a cultural necessity in the modern world. Greenwich Village is where new ideas have a chance to emerge when everything else is ossified Nothing's possible. It's possible in the village. <clears throat> so we're small, but we're in the village, and we're starting, and those shopkeepers I were talking to up and down Bleecker Street, they're glad we're here. There's a potential movement here that can be very significant in a time when the world is in total crisis. That's the role of Greenwich Village to address it. In order to take care of this matter on um, cities officials elected, we must face them at their own seats. We must go to where they're sitting and attack them with everything that they do that is considered corrupted to the cities, to the city, to the citizens of this city and to the business people. We must get them and face them on TV, on radio, everywhere that we can, put them in the eyes of the general public. Because most of these news do not exist, and the big people, big mass, where, where the thousands of people are, they're completely innocent, they're blind at this. They do, they do force laws that are completely against society, yes. and they are to work with society. We are facing a crisis in the city because we have a problem. The people that are on the top, they ruin the 75 or 80% of the people that are in need. And that is a major problem. We, as citizens of this city, we must go to City Hall and attack them. Not physically, but psychologically. In a way, they will push them out by doing the right thing, by teaching people, by organizing people, by educating people, and mobilize them. Once the citizens of this city are mobilized, are educated, we will stop these games of money, because it's simply it's money. They just get on top, and once they get on the top, they start doing their own business with landlords. And landlords go into buildings and attack the tenants. The tenants are there for 20, 30, 40 years, and they want to kick them out so they can get somebody for five, six thousand dollars for an apartment that pays maybe two thousand dollars. And this is not, this should not be allowed by the citizens, by the official of the city. This should be the other way around. We elect people to do their job for the citizen, not for the big hancho, not for the, for the big guys out there, for the big landlord. They, what they're looking for is to steal money from the poor people. 
we got to stop it. And that's the only way to get going with this problem. Otherwise, we'll, get, we'll be running and running and running, and nobody will be aware of what they're doing down in the main offices. They play all the games. Thank you. Would anybody else like to say anything? Okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. So thank you very much. Thank you everybody for coming. And I think this was, this was great. And like, you know, we say it like it is and it's important to, to be really honest. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you're Yay, doing. Yay, thank you. Yay.